so we can get the session started. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Brother Misba. I'm the Communications and Outreach Coordinator at Ikhna Relief's Muslim Family Services here in Michigan, Detroit. Uh, and I'm joined today by our esteemed guest, uh, Brother Mateen Sayed. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for joining us today. And he is going to be helping us uh, understand a little bit more about resume building, helping us give, give us some tips on, uh, you know, what it takes to make a good resume, build a good resume. Um, also, I included an email in the chat for anyone who's interested in sending the resume into him for a little bit of help on building it. Um, and in the subject section, I believe, what would you like them to write, brother, in the subject section of the email? Um, the subject section, I think I have... Uh... Have it in the last slide. Mm -hmm. We have uh, all the information. Resume help needed. Yep. Resume help needed. And then uh, we do have all this information yeah. again yep. at the end of the slideshow. Yep. yep. And we are going to be doing this for about an hour. So if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the Zoom group chat or raise your hand. Uh, we will be at, we will be living a little bit of time towards the end of the session to allow for more questions. So Jazakallah Khair, thank you so much for attending and let's get this started. Sure. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mateen Syed. I've been uh, in the recruiting and talent acquisition for almost to 27 years. And uh, I currently uh, for an information technology company as a senior lead talent acquisition. Um, I have experience uh, working in cross section of industries right from information technology, uh, manufacturing and healthcare systems. Um, so I want a little bit of action from um, the group out here to know exactly what kind of an audience I'm reaching out to. Um, if someone is a student or just beginning to start their career, can they uh, do we have an option of um, a voting or a putting a hand up or something like that on this? They can go ahead and write it in the chat and I can tell you how many. Yeah, I, 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 it will be easier for me to kind of um, know who my target audiences are so that we can focus a little bit more towards if it's going to be more of uh, a person who is starting their career, then it's going to be a little bit uh, different ball game um, on the resume. And if it's someone who is already experienced, but um, is trying, he or she to you know, uh, refresh the resume, then we need to do it a little bit differently. So um, some, if, if anyone can just um, tell what kind of file or what kind of a background you're coming from looking for employment, okay. So looking for employment, does that mean I can see in the chat box. So we have three responses. We have uh, Sister Amina saying uh, she has an old resume so, uh, be, before when she was in college. Okay. She needed a refresh on it. Um, Brother Abdul is saying this right. is his first employment in the USA. Uh, and then we have a, I think this is a sister, okay. Fatima. She's saying uh, already experienced, trying to get back after a break, recently added a graduate degree. And okay. Sara, Sister Very Sara, good. saying "Salam." I am a student and starting my career now. I've never worked before. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, also, for, uh, Sister Sonia saying just that, graduated uh, and starting and starting your career now. And Sister Hasna saying she needs a refresh on her resume. So it looks like we have about fifty fifty new fifty uh, okay. percent refresh. Yep. Okay. That that makes sense. So, okay. So has anybody at all not made a resume at all till now? Um, the, does everybody in this group have a resume? Or they need to start writing a resume? Okay. I see that um, Sarah needs to make a resume. Okay. So I'm going to start off with uh, um, right from the beginning, someone who has not made a resume, and then we can go into more uh, depth of uh, 
what a recruiter or a HR person or an applicant tracking system is, um, you know, applicant tracking something which kind of tracks the applicant's resume and picks up the buzzwords. So we will go through that process right from king resume format um, for your resume. I, I as a recruiter have seen resumes um, coming with different formats and different fonts. So first thing what we need to kind of, uh, when we build a resume, probably select a one font to the entire resume. Uh, I typically kind of look at uh, a font of Arial 10, that is a suggestion. I want to go on Arial 11 or 10 or 12 is a little bit larger in size. So typically Arial 10 or Times uh, New Roman uh, size 10 is, is good to go. Make sure that I see a lot of resumes just coming with first name, no last name. So make sure when you're doing a resume or preparing a resume, you include your contact information, work experience and education. I see a lot of resumes coming in with no contact information, just the first name. Sometimes there's no last name. I don't know for what obvious reasons, I don't see the last name. And there wouldn't be sometimes e um, on the resume and act like a phone number or a cell phone number or a home number, nothing listed on the resume. So make sure you start off with your resume with first name, name and your contact information, experience and education. So using a traditional heading for maximum compatibility. So, you know, you can use introduction and then go on with your education. So I'll go with that detail uh, with you guys in a, in a short while. The next thing what we need to do is um, applicable skills. Uh, when you're applying for a job, make sure that your skills reflect with the job description what you're applying for and make sure those buzzwords are included on your resume so that when it goes to a recruiter, the first screening person at an organization, it sometimes goes through a recruiter or sometimes goes into an app tracking system where the, the applicant system picks up the buzzwords and spits out all the resumes and shortlists and sends it to the, to the recruiter to the last. So, out of maybe like 200 resumes, maybe like resumes will be picked up with all the buzzwords and then it goes to the recruiter for final screening. So we need to kind of uh, make sure that when we are sending a resume that you, you definitely have your skills and job description, whatever matching on the job description is appearing on your resume. So apart from that, um, I would, I see a lot of resumes um, coming in with uh, objectives, like, you know, I want to be a top account manager, or I want to be leading a director in a few years from now. Objective is, is more become like an outdated um, objective. So, so, to, so me, as a recruiter, basically we, we evaluate a resume and we don't have too much of time with hundreds of resumes when they come in. I think the max time what I have to review a resume would be probably 15 seconds or 20 seconds. And then we look out for the buzzwords, we look out for the, um, the main responsibility he or she has been doing in the current job or the previous job, we like go back to the current experience or probably two or three projects prior to that. So we don't go too much depth, or maybe if a person has like 10 or 15 years of experience, we do not do the, the, the first experience or the initial experience. We look at the most re recent experience and then go back, maybe the two or three projects. So make sure you have um, included an um, ob objective statement or in the reference section then what you need to do is make sure you have proofread your resume. That's the basic thing you need to do when you're submitting a resume. I have seen a lot of resumes coming in with uh, spelling, spell check not done and 
lot of mistakes uh, on the resume. So make sure that when you make a resume, uh, you, you are on top of it. Uh, the other part of uh, when saving resume, we need to make sure that you save it as a PDF or a doc, like a Word document. Um, some of the more uh, um, applicant tracking systems these days have a system where it does not even accept an RTF format. So if you are saving your resume in a notepad or sending your resume in the notepad, it is not going to uh, not going to work because RTF is actually considered as a more of a um, a virus kind of a thing, which most of the applicant track is, tracking systems um, treated. So it's best to kind of have a Word document or a PDF format sent over once you have prepared your resume. Now moving on to the next slide, um, what what do you include on your resume? So you need to include. I think I already have mentioned that you need to include your contact information. Maybe you have a work experience there, education, and additional sections for career summary, skills, volunteering work, and additional qualifications can be added for relevant to the job when you're applying for it. So do we have any, I want to make it a more, a little bit of more interactive out here. Do you have any so far um, as of now? Or are we good? Can you repeat that again, please? Do we have any questions to audiences? I don't think so, not yet. We have a couple people sending their uh, their old resumes into you for review though. Oh. Actually, we do have one question from uh, Sister Sara says, what if someone has no experience to show? Okay. That's a good question. So um, it depends upon, I'm sure Sister Sarah must have gone to school, so she must have done some projects. So it would be a good idea to kind of highlight those projects, what you have done. Probably that could be a good suggestion. And also um, some of the volunteering work can also be a big impact um, on the resume. So you get a, a to talk to the person uh, across if you are applying to probably a charitable organization, then you volunteering definitely going to be a, a big, big, um, uh, thing on me. So I suggest um, Sister Sarah to kind of um, highlight if she, ha if she has done any kind of a voluntary work or any projects which she has associated with her uh, schooling it would be a, a good idea to kind of uh, put it on the resume. We had another question from a Sister Fatima says, what's the catch to put in when we have a break in our career? Ms. Bai, you, you, can you repeat that, please, Ms. Bai? She said, what's the break to put in? What's the, what do we uh, include in a resume when we have a break in our career? Um, just put break in the career for the reason what you have. Uh, we, um, let me give you a situation of uh, how I, I recruited one of uh, um, a consultant for our projects. We had um, a lady who was in information technology, she was working for almost like 10 years or 15 years. And she took a break to bring up the kids. She took a break of almost close to about seven to eight years. So, but she was really good in her, whatever IT skills she was and she called her for an interview. And the gap, what she had mentioned was that she, she had written over there that, you know, the reason she was off is because to raise the kids and uh, to take care of the I think uh, I think uh, we need to have a very upfront transparent resume in in displaying whatever you have done or whatever you're planning to do if you have taken a break for re take care of your parents I think that's a good idea for you to uh, put it over there because it kind of gives a, a type of personality of a person he or she is 
that this person is considerate with older people and is taking care. So we kind of build a personality based upon that. And it was done based upon why this person was off. But I think we, we kind of, as a recruiter, we do not just trash the resume. So does that answer um, your question? Inshallah, I hope I think that's a sufficient answer. Um, moving forward, we have a uh, brother Abdul says, "How many pages should a resume be?" It depends upon the number of experience. Um, I think I would look at a resume which is like max pages. Like I have about twenty-seven years of experience. If I put everything, it goes on to like fifteen pages. So I would um, cut it short and make it more of a, more of a two pager max. I would say the max it should not extend more than three pages because most of us who are experienced um, keep doing the same over and over again for the last like I've been doing the same thing for the last 25, 27 some years. So the job responsibilities and duties. Um, are the, almost the same. So what you can do is, when you have been doing those for that many number of years, you can just put the company's name where you've been working, the year where you have started to the year you have ended, and then put all the number of, the name of the companies below that and kind of mention the job responsibilities, what you have done. Like for example, if you have been working uh, for say GM for um, say from nine, nine to nine, 2000 and you have been doing the same responsibilities but you have been elevated and you are in different de position like designation so you can you can just write there uh, the, the company name and then below that you can just write from this year to this year from this year to this year inshallah thank you uh moving forward we have a sister sonia says should i include the volunteer work that doesn't have anything to do with the job it doesn't matter um it really doesn't matter. I have included my volunteering work. If you go to my LinkedIn profile and type in Mateen Syed, and if you look at uh, at the volunteering work, what I have I have uh, I have worked with uh, with uh, refuge over here in Metro Detroit. I have worked with uh, First Presbyterian Church for um, feeding the needy people. So it. It's nothing got to do with what I am doing, but still uh, kind of builds a personality of a person. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, that we, we evaluate and we do a lot of work before hiring a person. It's just not the res We go into the Google search, we go into the LinkedIn search. We, we do a lot of searches. So as a recruiter, we become more of investigators and um, to see the right person getting into the right job. Um, we go into the Facebook profiles and see what he or she has been doing and then evaluate and build a person's personality. So example for this sister, if she's, if she is not, not, if the volunteering work is not connected to what, whatever she has been doing, it's okay. You still can put it over there and it kind of builds a personality. If you have been, volunteering work, if you have been doing in a hospital, or if you've been doing with MFS, or if you've been doing with any charity organization, it kind of shows that you are a person who cares for others. So that's, that's what I'm trying to um, convey the message. So it, it that conveys to recruiter or the hiring manager that this person is really considerate of others, and it kind of builds up a personality out of a person. Well, thank you. Um, Sister Amina says, is it going to be a problem if my, re if my experience on my resume has nothing to do with the new job I apply for? Um, it depends upon what kind of, uh, how many years of experience and I, I need to dig into more of a detail. So if that is something which can be discussed on an email or she can probably 
Okay, inshallah. Uh, sister, you may email him your resume so you guys can discuss this over an email. Um, and then moving forward, she also Ooh. says, she gives an example. She says, so if I've been working for many years in different restaurants, but a different position, uh, do I need to mention all the restaurants I've worked in or how does this work on a resume? Um, you can mention all the restaurants. I know a company which hired a hired person from working in a restaurant uh, recruiter in one of the companies. She's been really, really successful. The reason because the, the person who is working in the restaurant, if, for example, if the person is a server or a, if, if a person has been working at a bar, it is totally a different kind of a personality you can build out of. If a person has been building at a bar, uh, he has been working at a bar, the person has been working with several people, several people who come across. So, so, so that person becomes a, a go-to person where this person is, is, is talking with many people with different personalities. So that person can be a good recruiter um, down the line if, if given little training. If a person has been a server, it's the same thing applies and um, the person is interacting with several personalities of customers coming into dine in and um, that of gives um, uh, a more more detail about the person who's been serving at the restaurant explaining the recruiter or the hiring manager that this person has with different personalities and has the bandwidth of absorbing personalities so so when we are recruiting we come across different personalities personalities, people, and personalities. So that's what I, I hope I have answered uh, the question sister wanted to know. Um, okay, so the next question is, is Brother Abdul says, what are some of the websites that you suggest we look at for employment? Mr. Spy, you're breaking apart. What are some of the websites you suggest that they look at for employment? Uh, what, um, it depends. If the person is in information technology, I would suggest the avid first posted on Indeed. Indeed is a place where if you post your resume at Indeed, it goes around to different um, it scrambles around and goes to different sites. So it would be a good idea to start off with Indeed and then post your resume with uh, dice.com, careerbuilder.com, monster.com. And I suggest to have a, a good LinkedIn profile. Okay, inshallah. Uh, that's all the questions we have for now. So if we want to continue with the PowerPoint. Sure. So I think we'll move on to the third slide, Ms. Ba. So I think I, I, I had mentioned a little earlier when I uh, started off the discussion about this, um, how to build and what to include on your resume. I'm going to start off with uh, the name on topmost on your resume with the phone number, location, which will have the city, state. You can avoid the zip code if you want. You don't need to mention the entire um, address, privacy reason. You, you don't need to mention like like a 3746 um, Rochester Road or something like that. You don't need to mention, you can, can just mention Rochester Hills or Troy, or Kenton, whichever city you are in. The reason why I am asking is recommending that you mention the city is if you are applying to a local um, organization, then we actually search um, candidates based upon zip code and the city because most of the recruiters or HR folks, they want someone who is close by within a particular zip code, maybe like 
who doesn't want to work within five miles radius? I'm sure. I mean, um, I have I have worked. Um, my all my jobs have been like in a three minutes uh, distance from where I live. I've been that, um, but but what happens is uh, the reason why I'm 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 talking about the city and the zip code is uh, we kind of search resumes based upon zip code maybe 10 miles radius initially, then if we do not get any candidates within those range, we go up every five miles to, to kind of see have additional candidate in that zone. Make sure you also have the email address and LinkedIn profile is very important these days. Um, if anyone has not, uh, prepared their uh, or come up with a LinkedIn profile. I would suggest them to kind of go with the LinkedIn profile and uh, come up with a LinkedIn profile um, with a simple profile of whatever is there on the resume, you can move to move it to the LinkedIn profile. And if, if something is that anybody has a Twitter profile, then make sure that your Twitter profile is clean and not attached anything with um, politically or religiously. As I mentioned earlier that a lot of people miss uh, the addresses. Um, several times, some of them have not even mentioned their phone number. So, so what we do is we try to push that resume into a back burner and, and evaluate the resumes which have all the information initially first and then go back and see if, if you have luck with the people with whoever we have, then we go back and check and write a note to the applicant saying that no, the, the phone number is to apply the phone number and then resubmit the resume. So the address um, has to be, make sure that it has to be a professional thing, not, not something which is like more of a fund related email um, or a brother? something like. Uh, it seems like your voice is cutting out a little bit. Would you be able to move to a better location with a better connection? I think I am. Hold on one second, let me try. Is it okay now? It seems fine for now. Okay, I'm sorry about that. It's probably the bandwidth which is there. A lot of people are working. Make sure that your email address uh, is, is really a professional email address rather than using something which is like a, you know, um, a beer 88 or, or a Justin Biber super fan or something like that email ID. So make sure that you do not have an outdated uh, email address like AOL or an Hotmail account. Make sure you have a, like a G so that, you know, um, that's that's really suggested for you to kind of have a Gmail account for a job search. So I think all gone through this uh, next uh, bullet point, which we are looking at here is, you know, we make uh, profiles whenever I get a resume, I make sure that we become more of a private investigators for the applicant. We make sure that we go into more of a depth of uh, finding out um, the online profiles right from LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, or any other social media to kind of uh, build a person's personality. I think I went through the other one, which way you suggested that you kind of build a LinkedIn profile um, and include your URL of LinkedIn profile on your resume when you're building your resume. Now, how many of us here in the group have uh, a LinkedIn profile? Uh, 
Uh, Brother Uzma raised his hand. We have five people who have said they do. Brother Batin asked uh, if okay. anyone here has a LinkedIn profile. Sister Amina. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, we have the about, LinkedIn profile has to be updated. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. We have about six people who've said that they have a LinkedIn profile and two people who have said that they don't. Okay. So it is suggested that you make a LinkedIn profile. Um, recruiters or hiring managers definitely want to look at what, what you are on a, on a social media. And it is suggested that whatever, um, resume you are preparing kind of reflects on your LinkedIn profile. I've had many times resume in to me and with no related, nothing related with whatever is there on the resume would not on the LinkedIn profile. Uh, make sure that matches with your resume. So moving on to the uh, fifth uh, slide, uh, Mispa. We're talking about work experience, which is uh, more of a crux of the entire resume. Uh, so you may want to mention work experience or um, project experience. And if you have any subheading or you want to go with professional experience or employment history, thing would work. So you would, for folks who have not prepared uh, the resume, preparing it for the first time, you need to have your um, latest experience or the latest voluntary experience or wherever you have worked or your school project, the latest projects, what you have worked, and then you will go from, from there. So you'll have the company information, the job location where you have worked, like if it's Rochester Hills or Canton or Troy, you would mention Rochester Hills, Michigan. Your job title, for example, if you have been a project manager or if you have been a software developer, software developer. Some of us uh, do not put the start dates and end dates of your um, the projects or the place you have worked. Very important for an HR person or a person who's evaluating the resume to have information about when the person has started and when the person has ended the projects or at any organization. I think I have an example below there, which says AB operation, you know, and the location, the person worked as a distribution manager from 01, 2017 to present. You can also use current date, or you can also mention, uh, currently working. So as a recruiter or a HR person, we look at a resume at job titles and have held and what is your caliber with this particular company? What have you worked at? And the format only makes it easy for them to, you know, basically see the sequence of how all of maximum co compatibility basically under each position subheading in responsibilities and measurable results. So basically you, you definitely want to mention what responsibilities you have been holding over here at the organization. Make sure you kind of mention what would be your day to day responsibilities and what have you achieved uh, with those responsibilities at XYZ or AC corporation. Any questions? Actually, we have about three. Okay, so Sister Mina responded back. She said, I'm really confused to be honest, and I've had too many different opinions on what to and what not to add on my resume. For example, I worked in the food industry for let's say five to six years and in warehouses for three years and customer service for Cricket Wireless Metro PCS for five years as I remember. So what's the best to add for my resume to attract company owners, if you know what I mean? Ms. Ba, I missed on the last part of it. Um, she worked 
the, the last portion of it. She's been working with food. She's, she said she has customer service part, what did you say? experience. She said she has customer service experience for Quirkit Wireless Metro PCS for about five years. So what does she want to know? What is the question? She's wondering how much of that to include on her resume. She can, she can mention the entire um, um, experience because if she's been working at a, at a did, you, did you mention that she was working for a cell phone company? Yeah. As, she said, as she said. Yep. Cell phone. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so she's been an agent over there uh, working for a cell phone company, which means that she has um, good things and she's able to convince the customers who walk in or maybe over the phone to buy um, different plans or different uh, products, what, what um, he, she has in the store. So I believe in strongly being very transparent um, because I as a recruiter look at people who try to go around and not mention things what they have not done on the res on in their life it's very easy to for a recruiter to find um information we are not trying to put that information on the resume i hope i've answered her question <clears throat> inshallah um sister claudia says is hotmail accounts better or gmail accounts I suggest that Gmail is, is, is better. Yahoo or Gmail. And then uh, Sister Amin also had another question. Uh, she said, I'm I, so I, sorry. I, go ahead. I, I said, she said, I, I'm so sorry. I'm kind of bad at technology. So I'm not sure what Mr. Mateen means when he's talking about a LinkedIn profile. May I have more details, please? And thank you. She wants to know how, about the LinkedIn profile. Yes. Okay. I'm assuming she wants to know like um, what, what LinkedIn is. LinkedIn is basically a, a social uh, media profile. It kind of is a professional profile where you see a lot of pe people who are working in the professional industry, um, from information technology to, to, to various cross section of uh, um, field like uh, I mean, it doesn't mean that anyone, even a student, my son has a profile. So it's a good place to kind of park your resume out there or your profile because um, it, a LinkedIn profile is like a, like a more of a Facebook uh, work profile. So I'm not, I hope I'm not doing things here, but I'm trying to, um, explain it in a, in a way where Facebook is for more of a personal things on the social side. LinkedIn is more of a related social media. I hope uh, I have answered the question, but if someone needs more assistance on um, building a basic LinkedIn profile, I'll be more than happy to help you. Inshallah, thank you so much for that help, brother. I think we can uh, move forward with the slideshow now. Sure. So, uh, still on the sixth slide, I think. Um, so basically, you want to explain on um, work profile when you're doing your, uh, when you're writing up your, um, each place you have worked, you may want to mention the duties you accomplished so there's a famous saying that resume writing that duty tells and accomplishments sell. So we look at more at the accomplishments of a person, what what they have accomplished in 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 a particular organization in like last two years or five years or ten years, whatever working, whether they have, for example, if it's a salesperson, the salesperson writes in volumes that, you know, I have done like 400 million business to, you know, has graduated to about 500 and 600 million to a billion dollar business over a period of 10 years. So that kind of gives an information about the person's uh, is, is vouching that this person can deliver this 
business. So if I were a sales manager and if I was hiring a sales person, so I would look at these volumes of business this person, he or she is bringing in and I'll say, okay, this person is going to give me maybe like 300 or $400 million business. So it's a good person to kind of hire. So um, the same way it applies to um, various fields of uh, person is he or she. So if in case a person is working in, in a restaurant or if a person is working in you know, you know, mechanical engineering, talk about the, the products, what you have been uh, working on um, or designing the products on the engineering side and how these products have been useful to the end use of the customer. So education is a very important uh, part of your resume building so if you have just started your resume uh, your your uh, career you know good idea for you to kind of have the education section minimized at the bottom of your resume instead of having it on the top that's the suggestion here um, it's not a thumb rule but you can you can Move it up and down if you if you need to be, unless you're applying for a, a, a like a data science or a data scientist opportunity, and if you have done a PhD in statistics or if you have done something related with a, a data scientist, or if you are applying for a mechanical engineer job, and if you have done some kind of an um, ASE or ACE certification on the mechanical side, that that kind of a certification is going to give a lot of mileage um, for the person who's applying to the other side, the recruiter or the hiring manager is going to be low certification and say, okay, this person is going to be a, a fit for this opportunity. So make sure that you mention the name of institution. I see a lot of uh, resumes, um, bachelors of science in science and um, no mention about whether it's a Wayne State or City of Michigan or Central Michigan. I don't see any information over there. So GPA is going to count a lot over here. Um, it doesn't mean that we disqualify um, resumes with lower GPAs. So if you are showing a resume of anything below 3.5, it's suggested not to mention the resume. Any questions here? Doesn't look like yet. Okay. A lot of times, um, lot of times uh, uh, people try to chop off their resume. Uh, chopping off in sense, if I'm applying for a job with 27 years experience, it's going to be not a discrimination that people will not, will see that, you know, hey, this guy has got 20 years of experience, but, you know, he has not mentioned the, the year of his graduation. So it's very easy for a recruiter or a hiring manager to know how many years of experience this person has from the date of graduating. More of the, but sometimes we do definitely go wrong because some people do complete their degree or diploma certification even later so that that is not a, a, a rule, but it is suggested that you kind of mention the year of completion so that the recruiter or the hiring manager knows exactly how many years of experience you have. So we are moving on to the seven slide, which I just mentioned about. Uh, Folks who have uh, recently graduated, the education section goes above your work experience and then the work experience or projects which you have done or course related work, uh, any organizations, um, all those information go below that, like LinkedIn group, GitHub or for the IT folks um, who, are, who are more doing open source projects and they put the, those projects out there. 
sometimes even your um, extracurricular activity, what you have worked on kind of inspires the HR manager or the hiring manager on the other side. Um, or, um, you know, if you're interested in um, any of the games, video games, or if you have been playing poker, you know, poker kind of, I'm not encouraging people to go out here, but it kind of gives a sense of, uh, um, of uh, again, an evaluation of a personality of a person on if the person is being actively playing poker, we kind of evaluate it in a different category as such. So I, I, I have about the applicant tracking system. Applicant tracking is a automated uh, tracking system for all the resumes. Most of the big companies like GM, Ford, Chrysler, or the big, big uh, tier one suppliers um, do have softwares, which kind of, even before it goes to a human person, human interacting with the resume, it goes through the applicant tracking system. And I'm pretty sure a lot of, lot of you here in this group must have uh, rejection notices um, saying that your, your resume was not sh shortlisted and we're sorry to kind of inform you that, but we'll keep your resume in, pro in the database and contact you later. So, so a lot of counts here in the, the buzzwords and the, um, there is open discrimination, but what happens is when, when there is a lot of experience and a lot of number of years of experience projected, then the resume kind of does not shortlist and it kind of does not spit it out to the manager. Any questions? Um, not yet. I think we can keep going. So, okay, cool. So, so again, I think I'm repeating the same thing uh, over and over again about the buzzwords on your resume. Make sure that when you're applying for a, a job, study the job description carefully and make sure that the job description, whatever is there, it reflects resume as far as you have done that job duties. So I'm not encouraging anyone on this group to put something what on the resume which they have not done. I am totally against. So make sure that if the job is suitable and you think you can do the job, take the, take the um, information from the job description and put it on your resume if you have accomplished it in the past or you are doing it currently. So we are moving on to the eighth slide, which is more a depth about your hard skills, which would you have to work out throughout your resume, including the skills section. If you want to display the skills section, this is more, mostly for folks who are in the information technology side related. So we definitely want to see um, what kind of uh, softwares you have used in the past or in the current and make sure you, when you're mentioning those softwares, the versions are up to date or the version is mentioned. This is an example of, you know, some of the skills, software skills this person has used like PHP, JavaScript, Cascade, file sheets, HTML, and, you know, Ruby and other things, database like MySQL, you know, Oracle or project management skills like Agile, Scrum, management. So we do search based on, um, as a hiring manager, I do search on based upon the skills. Like if I need a person who has worked on a mechanical engineering, most related with the uh, Katia tools, the designing tools. So I'll go first into the, the software for the resumes and then search for Katia tools and then um, resumes, whoever has worked, and then evaluate those resumes first. So, 
think I have uh, also mentioned about the slide, the last portion of it on the eighth slide, which, which you need to explain about the skills which you have utilized, the number of years, and the level of expertise you have. Um, that kind of is a more information. If you have used, um, if you have used um, SQL on your project, so you the, the recruiter or the hiring manager know, needs to know how you have utilized this SQL, whether you have generated any kind of reports, any kind of triggers or queries. The same applies to any person who is on the sales side or on the mechanic side. He or she would be mentioning about, um, be for example, for mechanical engineering, the person will write about the tools, what the person has used and how they have used it and what they have achieved um, to, to get the end product, how satisfied is, are the customers using this product. Moving on to the next slide, uh, we have the awards and honors. Some of these you can mention about, um, you know, whether you have received like a, an honor or if you are employee of the month, you can mention about uh, yeah, the satisfaction rate of uh, in a particular department you have, or if you have be, been a champion, or if you have done any kind of go karting for fun, you can mention those on your uh, resume. I think I also mentioned about volunteering and volunteering work and affiliations. If you have been an active volunteer, it is a very good suggestion for you that on your resume as well as on your LinkedIn profile. So going back to the initial when we discussed the objective statement, I think um, you it is suggested objective has become objective on your is become more of an outdated um, outdated statement on your resume. So I think it is better not to kind of suggested not to put objective statement uh, on your resume or just start off with um, saying that, you know, you are experienced in so-and-so, so many number of years of experience. If you are a student, you write about that, you, you have graduated and you have this number of projects in your graduation and you explain the projects below your, below your, um, your work summary or your file. So many of you, the folks I see the resumes coming with references, it is not necessary for you to uh, mention references on the resume, unless you know, in the job description, sometimes it, it kind of tells you to kind of give you at least two or three minimum references. So, References is not um, required at initial when you're submitting your resumes. And make sure when you're um, submitting resume, uh, when you're submitting your references, make sure that you contact your references and you tell them that you're using those names as a reference for applying for jobs because I have had a lot of times um, when I've contacted the reference received from the applicant, um, sometimes um, there's a situation where the person has left about five or six years old. They do not even remember the person working over there. So make sure to contact your most current references or your previous references and let them know that you're applying for a job and get their uh, email addresses, phone numbers, and let them know that you know, XYZ company will be contacting them for this particular job opportunity. I have never had an, uh, I've never had in my 27 years of experience, maybe one or two times got um, bad reference. No one gives bad references for the jobs. Most of them give good references. So the soft skills part of it on your resume, you do not need to, um, explain about you're a hard working person or you have good communication skills. Obviously, you know, when you're writing a resume and you're speaking to the recruiter, you obviously have good communication skills. It's understood. 
So you do not need to write on your resume saying that I have good communication skills. When you're writing a resume, it's obviously understood. You don't uh, mention that, but you can, instead of that, you list the skills you have you know, and you demonstrated your abilities to kind of work with accomplishments and measuring results. That's a way to kind of explain about your uh, interaction or the soft skills. With you. I think I mentioned about this. Uh, um, if you have anything above 3.5 or better, I think it is definitely suggested to mention it on the resume. Here's a sample uh, resume on the next slide, number 12. Um, this would be a, a person who has experience working with uh, a training company more on the part side, dealing with part side like like uh, like a store, um, like an AutoZone, Pep Boys, or a, a these kind of a thing background. So, so this person is a perfect fit um, for a job where the client is dealing with um, spare parts, motor spare parts, or a person, or uh, probably an Amazon Amazon company, which kind of is the trucking so they would need a person to manage uh, the trucks portion of it to maintain it and keep it in good condition so this person would be a good fit um, when you look at this person's uh, initial prof professional summary itself kind of speaks which says that you know the beginning the, the person has mentioned that he has worked with Kenworth trucking company and so heavy duty truck parts and FedEx trucks. So that itself kind of tells it the whole history of this, this particular person. So you would go with the work history. You would mention what designation you are. If it is current, if it's current or present, then which, school, which district and the location, the state, and what are the responsibilities this person has been holding in the current job, the previous job, as a sales manager, this combination gives um, the combination of a person having experience with the sales manager as well as um, working as a, working in fire district. So kind of give, gives us a combination of personality of this person that this person is working for, for a company which is in the sales side as well as he's been working as a lieutenant as a in the fire department. So it gives a combination that this person is, is a, a, a personality that he is caring person for the district as well as a combination of uh, sales. So we kind of build based upon this, uh, whatever is there on the projects and also obviously talk to the person. So the education is the next slide, which is there, Ms. Pa, on the 14th slide. I think we mentioned about the education for the experienced person all the way down at the bottom of where the person has an associate degree, the college, the location, and the year of completion with specific uh, coursework like business management, marketing, accounting, and communications. So we are done with the resume. We have any questions? We will move on to the cover letter. Yeah, we actually have a couple. Um, we have we have a, a person who privately messaged me. She uh, They asked, um, is it okay if they mention their private life, like just having a child, or if they got married or divorced, should they be including that on the resume? No, 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 no. It's a big about the personal life, about uh, anything personal related should not reflect on the resume. If it be divorce or or um, anything else related with, yes, you can mention if you have been, if you have a break in your year and if you have been um, for your family reason, yes, you can do mention about your, uh, uh, that you were taking care of the child or with your family or an older person in the family. Yes, you can mention that. But anything related with real personal life, no. Okay, 
Um, also, we have uh, Sister Amina. She wrote in the chat. She asked about 3.5 or above should be added, but less is not a good idea. I believe you answered that question. Um, and then she it asked. Broke apart. I'm sorry. Uh, she said, um, sh- so, sh- so a 3.5 or above should be added on the resume, but any less is not a good idea. Um, I believe you answered this question already through your presentation. Yeah, it, so. is, it is suggested. Yeah, it is suggested not to kind of mention that uh, if it is less than that. But, but that doesn't mean uh, that doesn't mean that we disqualify the person. I, I believe, believe in not disqualifying anyone. So I probably also give a lot of opportunities to people. It again depends upon the person who is writing your resume. So um, there could be a reason why the person has been low on the GPA, maybe for, for some family reason, or maybe financial reason. There could be various reasons. So I, I try to be a more of an open book for discussion. So I don't know how the other recruiters would would react or the hiring manager would react to a lesser GPA. Uh, but when I GPA, if I have talked to the, if I have spoken to the person on the phone and if I like the person, I don't care about anything on the GPA side. I put it on the back burner. That's my style of hiring. I really do not believe in GPAs. And, and the current place where I work, uh, when I joined um, seven years ago, they wanted only person, uh, a person who would come from a computer science background. Um, obviously, because we are in an information technology consulting company, I tried to change the rule over there and we started hiring folks from different backgrounds. We have a person with masters in science in, in, in music. So who is a top notch information technology person. It doesn't mean that um, if you are low on GPA, that doesn't mean that you wouldn't be good at work. That okay. Answer, does, have I answered the question? I think that was good. Um, she also asks, uh, right below it, she says, will I be asked for my GPA when I do a job interview if she doesn't include it? Um, so far, she hasn't been asked, but she was wondering if she would ever be. Um, a smart recruiter will know why you don't have the GPA over there. So they may ask you, um, it depends again upon the company. Um, some, com- some organizations are very strict about the, the GPA. I see that if you have to, in order to get internship or co-op, some of the big organizations have mentioned in the job, job description when you're applying, if you have anything lesser than 3.0 or 3.2, I don't know, I don't recall that, but they, men- they kind of mentioned in the job, descri- job description that, I mean, if you've not maintained that much, you don't need to apply. So some companies do are very strict about, some companies are not, some companies are flexible. So, and some companies do by the, job, the, the experience what you have, or if you do not have experience, then you kind of put in your um, school project work experience, as I mentioned earlier. Okay. Um... Sister Fatima asks, can ex-colleagues be references? Uh, no to it. Um, I think uh, um, as far as I have had experience for your immediate supervisors for references. Colleagues can be a reference Sometimes in situations like where the company is shut down and the manager is there or for various reasons or the person is retired or he or she as a reference is not taking calls. Um, this is why in the if, if, if earlier I kind of mentioned that sure when you're doing references, you give your, you've spoken to your references and good give references which which are your supervisors, but some situations are there. Where I have spoken to colleagues to kind of find um, more details about how a, how a person, he or she is working as key. So it all depends upon the company you've been applying to, if they are okay with uh, 
uh, with the colleagues uh, as a reference, then that should be okay. But 99.9% uh, of the time, it has a supervisor's uh, reference. I see. Um, someone privately asked me, um, they were laid off due to COVID. How do they explain that? Um, just up front, you have to say that you were, I mean, he's the one who there are like 1.4 million people who have find, filed for unemployment. It's just not one single person who has been laid off. So everybody knows there's a reason for being laid off or furloughed or so be upfront in saying that you've been one among the 1.4 million people who have been laid off. I see. Also, uh, we have another person who privately asked me uh, if a person is looking for a data job, a database job after a long gap of 10 to 15 years, how do they start? How do they start back? How do they start back into it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good question. Um, that is more focused towards what I am doing. <laughs> no. Anyway, so, so if this person has uh, experience on the data side, I would suggest to go back for a, uh, a quick refresh course, maybe for one or two months. I'm sure with that much of vast experience on the database side, the, he or she should be able to uh, hit the ground in running pretty soon with the new versions of, uh, or a new, new, um, example, the person is a database on more on the SQL or the or DB to Oracle side, go to, um, suggestion is go to a refresher course program. You can go to any of the um, free programs initially, maybe like a UE or LinkedIn has its free programs or Google has its free programs. So try to register on any of those uh, free programs first, get the hang of, uh, hang on, you know, of the new versions. Um, and then if you feel that, you know, this is what you're going to continue in the same path, then I think it would be a good idea to go in for a more of a professional uh, experience program or a course where you get enrolled for uh, one or two months. And I think that should be a good uh, way to start off with. Alhamdulillah. Um, also, we have Sister Fatima asks, is it fine to mention in your resume that one is looking for only remote work from home? Uh, is it it's considered normal in the non, is it considered normal in the non COVID scenario as well? Not really. Uh, uh, it depends upon what kind of a job you are applying for. If it's going to be something related with, uh, uh, a call center, sometimes the call centers are decentralized these days. They kind of handle it like insurance company. I think folks are working from home, even in the non-COVID situation. Uh, but right now, in COVID situation, everybody is working out. But uh, it all depends upon the company um, you're applying to. If, it is, if the job opportunity says that it is, it is going to be um, on the job, then it is a waste of applying for those opportunities. Um, you cannot be applying for a job for on-site position and expecting to be working remote. I think, um, I think uh, situation change. I have had a lot of places where um, it again depends upon the personality of an individual. I've had, um, I've had uh, employees who have been working who are sitting in Michigan have uh, projects based out of Ohio. They've just gone for like the first initial 15 to 20 days to know the team and know the project. And the rest of the time they've been working from home in Michigan for like three, four years. So it all depends upon the combination of uh, the, 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 um, the client, the, basically the employee. And sometimes uh, the, the, the manager is also responsible the manager is really nice. They let you work uh, remotely. Um, so it depends on what kind of a job this person is applying for. So if the person has to be on site and interacting with, um, in, a, in a banking environment, if it's a person is a teller, 
then the person has to be on site. Um, or if the person is in, um, like working for an auto part company, the person has to be in person. Um, unless, unless the job calls for um, working in a remote fashion, like, like a person like me who can work anywhere, um, all I need is a, a, a connection connection and I'm good to go. So it all depends upon what kind of job you're applying for. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Uh, we have another question from Sister Amina. She is saying, uh, she, she asks, is saying personal reasons a good answer for the reason to leave the job? I've mentioned that uh, to three of the jobs on my resume and I'm afraid it is not a good look for my resume. And I would like to know the difference between references and recommendation letters, please. You need, Ms. Ba, can you repeat? I think there was some kind of a static in between. I'm sorry. She said, she said is it a good, is personal reasons a good reason to, uh, to put on her resume for a job leave? Like writing for personal oh. reasons. Uh, again, depends if it is got to do with anything, taking care with the family, the person has left the job, then I think it is suggested to be very transparent um, on the resume. If the person has been taking care of um, elderly people at home, then the person should mention that on the resume. Um, I need to probably know exactly what is going on with uh, this particular situation. Uh, not be able to give a precise answer unless I know the background of what's going on. If, um, if, if the sister can email me a scenario of what exactly is happening, would be able to give in more inputs. Okay, inshallah. She also asks, uh, what is the difference between recommendations, rec recommendation letters, and references? Uh, she said when one of the jobs she applied for, they asked for a recommendation letter from one of her instructors at college. This is typically a recommendation letter, I think, is uh, mostly associated uh, with someone who is uh, graduated or graduating or looking for a job or going in for a higher studies like a, a master's program. Um, for example, in my situation, my son is moving from bachelor's to master's program and he has uh, recommendation letters from the place he works right now or his uh, master's program. And he also has recommendation letters from his school recommending him about his personality, his work and his character and recommend for uh, the master's program. Um, that is recommendation. References is basically got to do with your job related work, how you have been, what, um, rather reframe that, um, what you have done, what you can do, what will you be able to do, would be the uh, of a reference from your current supervisor or your former supervisor. So, so as a as a as a hiring person, I would uh, I would give you a scenario of um, um, where I ask for three references for an applicant um, supervisory um, references, and I call supervisor and ask a bunch of questions right from um, what were the job responsibilities uh, of this person and. Uh, how has this person been working in the team environment? Whether this person has contributed contributed anything to the job? Or would you recommend this person for a job? And why was this person um, why was this person working, not working why did this person leave? Various reasons. Um, and would you rehire this person for the job? So those are the type of uh, things what I would expect from a reference. Uh, does that, that? I hope uh, I have given some insights about recommendation and references. Alhamdulillah, I think so. 
Um, I have a private message from someone else. They asked, um, yes, she said yes, brother, by the way. Um, she said, how about experience when applying for jobs? They ask for experience. What kind of position can we apply as freshers? As fresh, fresh people, as, as I'm assuming she's meaning. It again goes. Good, uh, good question. Um, it again goes back to what he, uh, she or he, whoever is applying for that particular job. It depends upon what career path you want to take. If it is got to do with uh, uh, applying for a sales job or if it's been applying for a, uh, a healthcare related job, uh, just could be any, any job. So if the person, it all depends upon what his passion is and what, what they, he or she wants to take, which career path the person wants to take. That doesn't mean that you cannot change a career four years from now. Um, you can always change career four or three years or five years or 10 years from now and move into a different direction altogether like a 360 degrees. So if, if a person is um, a student and is applying for a job just to take the route of uh, whatever the projects they have worked on in their academic, um, you know, while graduating or um, if they have done projects related outside of um, their um, schooling, that is also suggested for you to put in on your resume. Um, for example, if someone who's interested in um, information technology, but also someone who in mechanical engineering, but has a passion of uh, like, uh, you know, who's working in mechanical, but also has a passion of building something like a, a prototype. So they can come up with a, a project saying that, hey, I did, I did this project on the side of uh, building up a prototype for uh, for myself or an XYZ company, um, you know, there are different ways you can project yourself. If you, if you I need to know more details about, about the background of the person um, on what, what are the major and what are the projects she has uh, worked on in her education to kind of project it on which direction to go to. We have another person who is asking, do employers actually read the cover letters? Ms. Ba, you broke apart. I'm sorry. Do employers actually read the cover letters? We have someone asking. <laughs> That's a good question. I was just going to the next slide, Ms. Ba. If you can move on to the 15th slide, please. Okay, I'm on there. Okay. All right. So... I, as a recruiter, do not read the cover letter. I mean, I'm very honest. I don't read the cover letter at all uh, because resume speaks a lot more than the cover letter because cover letter is basically uh, more of a, 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 a more short explanation of what you are. But still, if you look at the what to include in the letter is basically, I think you're you, you need to probably mention how your experience meets the job job requirements. So it's basically got to do with going back again to your job, the posting, extracting the information from the job posting and putting it back onto your cover letter is what um, is just. So I strictly believe that 80% of the time or 90% of the time cover letters do not go it goes waste. So, but but still, as as a applicant, you would want to submit a cover letter that kind of uh, shows the seriousness of an applicant for a job. And I forgot to miss. Uh, I missed on the why the basic reason in the cover letter would be is. You know, you want to mention why you would be suitable for that particular opportunity. Nispa, are you there? I'm sorry, come again? Hello? So I, I think someone lost uh, the voice, so I was not too sure. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, because I thought someone just messaged saying that, they lost the wall, so I was not too sure whether I was audible or not. 
Uh, if you're having, if people in the chat are having trouble um, hearing, uh, you guys can reconnect to the chat again, and I'll let you guys back in again. So what I was, um, what I was uh, mentioning out here uh, is that you want to definitely mention why you are applying for this job and the basic thing is here is uh, why you are suitable for that particular job description in that organization so that's something which uh, uh, you want to leave on the cover but as i mentioned i uh, i do not read cover letters at all i don't have time to read cover letters because my name is to see what this person has done uh, on the projects or um, on the resume but still, um, we still want to cover letter when when you're applying for a job opportunity because that kind of shows the seriousness of the applicant for this particular job opportunity in uh, regarding the cover letter Uh, Soha asks, is there a specific thing we should add to the cover letter if it's not for an internship? Uh, if it's not for internship, you need to mention about a position which you are applying for and the skills, what you have and why this particular job opportunity is suitable for you in this particular organization. So that would be the crux of your cover letter. So explaining um, a little bit of story of how you have achieved. Um, like, for example, if you have buying for a call center, you know, you can you can always talk about how many how many customers you speak per minute or per, per or the, how many words do you enter into uh, the data you enter into a system or the tracking system or the I don't know too much about the call center, but I think uh, most of the call centers evaluate a candidate or an applicant based upon how customers you speak in probably in two minutes or three minutes, and then how many, uh, how much of information do you type into the data system um, to see the speed of your typing uh, into the system. So you may want to mention, um, think on, think on what you are capable of doing, and just the same thing on your cover letter. Okay, and what if it is for a resume? I mean, not for, not for a resume, for an internship. Ms. What, what if the cover letter is for an internship? So if your cover letter is for internship, then you apply for an internship and explain about your projects, what you've done in, in, your, in your graduation and why you are suitable suitable for um, uh, for that uh, internship if you're applying for uh, if I can give you a story out here uh, a typical situation in my son uh, who was doing his mechanical engineering he had to write a letter and then uh, prepare his resume as well as a cover letter where um, he's in as a mechanical engineering program right now but He's in a program where he does his uh, internship too. So the color to include on what he has achieved in his high school. So he happened to complete his uh, ASE or ACE certification uh, at school where he has played around with a lot of uh, in the automotive club, uh, the school district. So that is something which you may want to display on the cover letter where um, you can explain that, you know, this person has some kind of uh, experience and has got the hands dirty uh, working around with uh, with uh, changing oil or brake pads or I'm just giving an example out here based upon uh, uh, for an internship for, for a high school student. Okay, I think that's good. Um, that's all the questions we have. They said, oh, they said, thank you, by the way. Well, thank you very much. Those are very good questions. 
So if we do not have any questions, we are going, I think we have come to an all end. Uh, I think obviously the end cannot be done without thanking uh, MFS, this uh, platform and opportunity. Uh, thank you to Sumi Akhtar, the director of MFS, and obviously MISPA for doing the entire, the backbone of this uh, webinar, for arranging this uh, webinar program and uh, opening up another platform to help uh, people succeed in the career. And that's my uh, email ID. And if someone needs any help with uh, uh, building up a resume or LinkedIn profile, anything at all, so please feel free. Uh, I am... Uh, more than happy to help you guys out to succeed in your career. Uh, please make sure when you mention, uh, when you send an email on the subject line, you have resume help needed because I get thousands of emails and it's very difficult for me to kind of, um, you know, choose which one to reply. Um, I think uh, I'm pretty much covered. If, if someone has any questions, uh, they can shoot it across. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer that question. I hope, uh, I hope uh, this session was uh, useful um, for everyone out here. And I really enjoyed the um, webinar. And if something is, you, uh, Ms. Bai, if you want to have another session two, or you know, if something related with that, if, they, if, if someone wants to have uh, some more help on this, I'm, I'll be more than happy to kind of help them. Jazakallah brother. We appreciate everything that you've done for us, taking the time out of your busy schedule today to, to help us conduct this workshop. So thank you so much for that, brother Mateen. Um, if you guys are uh, interested in more workshops like this, uh, please subscribe to our social media. Uh, it's at MFS Detroit. You can find us on there. You can also Google us, Muslim Family Services, or It Can Relief Michigan or It Can Relief Detroit. You can find us on all of our platforms, and uh, you guys can subscribe to our social media outlets so you can know when we're having more workshops like this. Uh, like Khair, everyone, for coming to attend, and uh, we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum Thank you very much. We are also having another session, by the way, on July 18th as well. So, if you are interested in that, please stay, stu please stay tuned for more information. Thank you.